this video will be about fills. So let's draw a simple graphic on the screen. In this case, we're just going to do a triangle. And we're going to change this into a fill. Now you notice, um, basically, a bunch of closely spaced lines have been put in to the object, the interior of the object. And under fill, we have these different parameters. So if we change the angle, it's going to change the angle of these lines that it's being filled with. Now, right now, we don't have any fill pattern, so we're just going to use the length of the lines um, to establish where it's going to put down points. And this is not normally what you want to do. I mean, you can play around with the numbers and maybe get something that you want. But what's better is to actually use a fill pattern, which will set sort of a uh, uh, desirable effects like the Tommy or something like that. So, um, in to set the fill pattern, you open a fill pattern object, which um, you can draw on your own. So, I'm just going to go in here to the current release of embroidery wear, and I'm going to choose the default fill pattern. Now, you notice that um, now. Um, the spacing in the default fill pattern, I think, is about four millimeters between each stitch. So no matter what angle we choose, this pattern will be maintained, where it's not necessarily the case when you didn't have a fill pattern. If you don't want a fill pattern, just basically get rid of the file name here, just delete it, and it'll go back to um, using the stitch length to determine how much it fills. So if we set the stitch length to 40, which is that default fill pattern, uh, you notice that it's doing some strange things that we really don't want necessarily. What this will end up look like, it'll end up having depressions where these stitch points are. And you know, that's kind of fun for certain effects. But in this case, we're going to uh, use the default fill pattern. And then no matter what angle we set, it's going to be consistent every time. All right, so generally, uh, the spacing is set to two, which is a pretty tight fill. You won't want to set it to one. That just will turn into bulletproof embroidery. Um, you can probably get away with three, which just basically uh, makes the fill lines further apart. Soft fill edge. Right now we have a hard fill edge as a default. Um, you can notice that the points here are very closely spaced at the end. There's one right next to each other. For every single fill line, there's an end point at the edge of the object. If you change the soft fill edge, which is more of a standard what people use, it will just do every other object like that. And sometimes that will be good. You won't cut your stabilizer. I found that if you use a hard edge, a lot of times if you have a cutaway stabilizer, it'll just basically cut the stabilizer in half at that point, and then you won't have any stabilized effect anymore. Um, so soft edge is generally probably a good idea to use. Um, I'm going to set this back to hard edge just so that we can see what more of these functions do. So. Uh, it, these aren't very important right now. The fill offset just offsets the pattern. Now this is important if you have a pattern that has like a circle or something in it where you want it to line up, let's say, on some part of your graphic. Um, you can offset uh, in tens of millimeters where the pattern will start. Um, the pattern increment X will actually um, increment the pattern. It's kind of hard to explain. I think I would have to explain that better when we actually do a pattern. Um, what it's doing is the pattern is a series of columns of dots. And so you basically you're skipping some of the columns in this case and jumping. So you probably want to generally set that to one so that you use every one. So those are the basics um, of the fill. Uh, the fill order, we have another video to describe that, which explains it in pretty detail on how to use that.